As the House of Faith won a decisive battle against the House of Blades, burnings continued throughout Acropolis. Another group with similar interests had taken note of their work. Believing that the ultimate sacrifice to their dark gods would be in the divine hierarchy of House Cawdor, Helot cultists began to seek them out. The ritual went totally wrong, however, and now the entire sector is soaked with a dark energy. Welcome back to Miniature Game Montage, and we have an exciting matchup today between Haas Kaldor and the Helic Cultists of Acropolis. A quick look at the campaign table shows the House of Faith at 1-0, while the Cultists will be making their campaign and channel debut. The Brethren of Judgment is led by Priest Gabriel. They add another bone picker, Simon, to their roster. They also distribute some reclaimed auto pistols. They enter the fight today at full strength with 10 fighters and a gang rating of 1035. The Helot Cultist group Affliction is led by Angmar, a demagogue with reclaimed auto pistol and chain sword. He has mesh armor and overseer as his skill. He has two disciples, Nine and Ocelot, with heavy stubbers and infiltrate. A number of cultists follow with reclaimed auto guns and flak armor. Jek is a cultist with a grenade launcher, and Chum has a long rifle with an infrasight. In total, they have nine fighters available worth 990 credits. Today's scenario is Slaughter. The battlefield will be our standard 3x3, and crews are random D3 plus 7. House Caldor and the Cultists will be at full strength. Special rules for the scenario include Bloodlust. A demonic fury has saturated the battlefield, driving fighters insane. All ranged attacks suffer a minus 2 to hit, and you must pass a willpower test before making ranged attack or the action is wasted and no attack is made. At the start of all activations, we'll roll 2d6 and add strength. If it is 10 or more, you must charge the closest enemy if possible, or use both actions to get as close as possible to the closest enemy. If it's 14 or more, you will charge the closest fighter, friend, or foe. If there are no fighters within charge reigns, suffer an injury roll instead. This should be pretty wild, as neither gang is built for this type of fight. Both crews get custom 2 on their tactics, with House Caldor getting purity through fire and rise anew. The cultists get seize the initiative and click. We'll end this battle when only one gang has fighters remaining. Those with fighters still on the board will be victorious. This should be an interesting battle. As a side note, I do lose my partner in turn 2, but I do continue the game solo. Turn 1 is coming up next, and I hope you enjoy. And turn one priority rolls coming out, and it looks like House Cawdor is going to take it with a two. And right off the bat, we're going to roll 2d6 and add strength. That is going to be an 11, plus three is 14. So this fighter is going to go insane, and he is going to charge into the Priest Gabriel. Remember, this is 2d6 plus strength, and if it's 14 or more, they will charge the closest fighter, friend, or foe. He's going to launch two attacks unarmed into Gabriel hitting on fives, and both of those shots are going to miss. The Cultists will take their first activation, and Bosk is going to roll up a seven, add three, and that is going to equal ten, so he's going to use both of his actions moving towards the closest enemy fighter. Zachariah activates four house Cawdor, the same thing happens to him, and both actions will be used to move closer. Chum has the next activation, rolls up a 6, plus 3 is 9, so he can move freely here. He is still going to use both of his actions to move forward. As we flip back to House Caldor, Lazarus with his grenade launcher, he is going to roll up a 4, can act freely. will also use both of his actions to get a better positioning. The turn goes back to the Cultist, and Flea will activate, rolls up a 7, so a 10 in total for him. Both actions will be used to run towards the closest enemy, and that is what he is doing moving up the board. Tobias activates 4 House Cawdor, easily going to be above a 10, and he will use both of his actions to move towards the closest enemy. Over for the Cultist, we have Raisin attempting to activate, he rolls up a 10, and he will be using both of his actions to move forward towards the closest fighters as well. Turn goes back to the House of Faith, and Ezekiel activates. He will use both of his actions to move forward. As we flip back to the Cultus, Jack is going to activate, rolling up 2d6 and adding strength. That is going to be over 10 as well, both of his actions also being used to get closer to enemy fighters. 
the firebrand Jedediah is going to roll 2d6 and he is going over 14 he is going to charge the closest fighter friend or foe which happens to be the bone picker Micah charges him in the back two attacks base plus one for the charge this will be three unarmed attacks and he is going to be hitting on fours dice at the deck that will be two hits and it is strength three toughness three so wounding on fours it will be two wounds he does not wear any armor so two injury dice will be rolled out here and he gets two flesh wounds bloodlust slowly taking over the fighters minds and we flip back to the cultist where angmar he rolls up a four he is fully in control of his actions he is going to use both of them to move forward for House Caldor, we have the Brethren, Kane. He is going to roll up. He is in control of his actions, using both of them to move and getting in cover on their right flank. Lastly, for the Cultists, we have Dog, who is going to roll up an 8 plus 3 is 11. Both of his actions will be used to move forward towards the closest enemies. The Redemptionist Brethren, Isaiah, is up next. He rolls up a 7, plus 3 is 10. He will use two actions to move towards the closest enemy, as there is not one within charge range. Ocelot then activates, rolls up a 7 as well, has to use both of his actions to move towards the closest enemy, and this will put him in an exposed position. The Bone Picker, Micah, with his two flesh wounds, will activate, rolls up his 2d6. He's in control of his actions here, and he is just going to use both of them to move forward. Lucky to be alive. We roll up for the other champion for Chaos, 9, and he rolls up a 9, and that is going to take him over 10. Both of his actions will be used to move as he is bloodlusting towards House Caldor. Priest Gabriel activates next. We are not counting him as being tied up in combat with their own fighters. He is going to roll up a 10 plus 3 is 13. So both of his actions will be used to move forward as well. And that brings a very interesting turn 1 to a close. You can kind of see the mechanics of this scenario and how it's going to play out. The fighters may not always be in control of their actions. Plus there are heavy, heavy penalties to shooting. House Cawdor almost killing one of their own fighters. It's going to be interesting as the fighters get closer to each other. We're going to roll for some faith here. And on a 5-up, House Cawdor is going to generate faith dice. They will generate 2 as we move into turn 2. And turn two sees the initiative being played by the cultist as nine is in template range. He activates first, he rolls up a nine, so he is unable to control his actions, and then he needs to roll a two on a d3. He does that and he launches into contact with Gabriel. This is a position he does not want to be in with no close combat weapons, weapon skill of four, two unarmed attacks, one hits. We have to re-roll that due to the parry rule on that chain axe carried by Gabriel. It is a hit. Rolling to wound is unsuccessful, however. Reaction attacks from Gabriel will come back across with that chain axe. He also has a stub gun, so three attacks in total hitting on threes. Two of those are going to be successful, one from the stub gun and one from the chain axe. Strength four on the chain axe requires threes in order to wound. And that will not wound the stub gun at strength three, toughness three will require fours. And that is going to cause a wound. Mesh armor on this guy is a five up save and that's made. On the other side of the board, Lazarus is going to attempt to shoot a frag grenade from his grenade launcher. First needing to see if he's in control of his own actions or not. And he does roll up a double one, so he will be able to take this shot if he can pass a willpower check. Per the scenario, that is a six up, so willpower check is taken. That is good. Now he did aim first, making his ballistic skill a three. There should be a minus two modifier here for the ranged attack, making this a five. We did miss it. I believe this was the only time that we missed it, but we counted this as a hit, and it should have been a miss. 
so d6 and a scatter should have been rolled out. Instead, we roll for a knockback, and he is going to be knocked back. He will become pinned, and then strength 3 against toughness 3, 4s will be required to wound that will not wound. The cultist did play the tactics card click to make that grenade launcher be out of ammo. Dog then activates for the cultist. He's in control of his on moves this time, and he is going to open the door and move through. The House of Faith then activates Kane. He rolls up 2d6 and adds 3. He will charge the closest enemy fighter if possible. And 9 is going to be right here tied up with Gabriel. He moves through the gap and into combat. Kane only has a reclaimed auto gun, so no close combat weapons. There will be 2 unarmed attacks that get made. And he will hit on 3s due to the assist from Gabriel. Both of those will miss, however. 9 is going to give him a shot back unarmed, and he would be hitting on 5s due to the interference. He does land a shot with his fist, and 4s would be required to wound. There's no wound. Back to the cultist, Bosk is going to activate, rolling up 2d6, and he's going to be good to move on his own. Both of his actions will be used to move up to the door. Moving back to the Brethren of Judgment, Micah is going to activate 2d6 plus 3. That is well over 12. 12 on the 2d6 alone. He will charge the closest fighter, friend, or foe, which happens to be Ezekiel. Charges him into the back, and he will make two unarmed attacks, hitting on 4s. One of those will hit. He will need 4s to wound. That will do a wound, and Mesh Armor is a 5-up save on Ezekiel. He does make the save. Back over for the cultist, Flea is going to activate. He is going to bloodlust towards the door using both of his actions to move. And then back for House Cawdor, Isaiah is going to activate, rolls 2d6. And he is going to bloodlust as well, rolling over a 14. So he is going to charge into the back of Kane. He decides to make two unarmed attacks against Kane, hitting on fours. One of those hits, it will require fours to wound as well. And Kane does wear flak armor, which grants him a 6-up save. The wound goes through, and a 6-up save will be required, or an injury die will come out. And that will fail. So an injury die comes out, and he goes down with a serious injury. At this point, House Kaldor inflicting the damage on themselves. This is going to cause break checks for Gabriel as well as Isaiah. And rolling these nerve checks, first for Isaiah, he is going to be good. They have a cool of six, and then rolling up for Gabriel as well. That four is going to cause him to break. Back over for the cultist, Chum activates, and he rolls up a six. In control of both of his actions, uses both of them to get to higher ground with that long rifle. The House of Faith activates Tobiah, who does a bloodlust directly into his brother, Zachariah, and two attacks coming out, needing a fives to hit. These are unarmed. One is going to hit, and then they need fours in order to wound. Strength three, toughness three. There's no wound. The cultists then activate Angmar. They're going to roll up 2d6, and he is going to bloodlust into Jek. Electing to make three unarmed attacks, he hits on threes. Two of those will be successful, and then wounding on fours. One wound is successful. Jack does have flak armor, so a six-up save would be required, and that is going to be failed. So an injury roll will be rolled out for Jack, and it is a serious injury. So casualties being taken on both sides from Bloodlust. We roll up a cool check for Angmar. He is cool on a 5. We had a 4 on the board and a 1. That is good enough. Ezekiel activates in the alleyway. Rolls up a 5. Can't control his actions. And he is going to move up to the door. Getting ready to open it with that eviscerator. Jack activates and he is just going to pass on his action. Looking to get an assist from Angmar that just took him down. The Firebrand Jedediah activates, rolls up a 6, plus 3 is 9, so he is totally good, uses both of his actions to get to higher ground. 
Raisin activates next. A 2d6 test. 10 plus 3 is 13. Both of his actions will be used to move forward. The Bone Picker, Simon, then activates. He will roll up a 6. He will pass his test and use both of his actions to move, looking to get up the center of the board. And then we have the Disciple, Ocelot, who activates. His 2d6 test will be over a 10, and he is going to stand and use his second action to Bloodlust forward. This will open up an opportunity for Zachariah, who is going to roll 2d6 here and to see if he can control his actions. I don't think it's going to matter much because he's going to get a 9. That is going to be a 12 in total. He is going to launch into combat with Ocelot. He gets two attacks from his polearm at strength 4, first requiring 4 to wound. Two shots coming out with a weapon skill of 4. And he will get one hit, and at strength four, toughness three, three's needed to wound. There will be a wound, no AP on the weapon, and Ocelot does wear mesh armor, so a five-up save will be taken and failed. That will give him one wound. Ocelot will make a reaction attack, one unarmed, needing a four, and he will miss. The Priest Gabriel activates, rolls his 2d6 check, and he is going to be good. Needs to pass an initiative check here because he is broken, and if he does not, he will just stand there and remain engaged. And we got this wrong as he is supposed to flee, allowing his opponent to potentially make reaction attacks. Instead, we left him engaged, so that was a miss on our part. Turn 2 does come to a close. And we've got a lot of fighters across the board that are just ill-prepared for close combat. But we do push forward in the end phase with a recovery roll from Kane, getting an assist from Isaiah, and he is going out of action. Kane will be the first casualty of the match, rolling up a d66 for him with the first number in red. That is a 64, which will be critical. Jack also rolling up for recovery, and he is getting an assist from Angmar. He will stay down with a serious injury. The Priest Gabriel is going to rally. That will give him an XP for this match. And then we're going to move into generating Faith Dice. And we've got a lot of fives and sixes out there this time. There will be four in total, taking their total up to six. Turn three, priority rolls going out, and House Cawdor will take it with a four, and Ezekiel is going to activate first. He is going to roll 2d6 to see if he can control himself or if he will bloodlust, and on that seven, he is going to bloodlust, opening the door and moving within one inch of the cultist. Affliction will then activate Ocelot, first rolling 2d6 to see if he can even act on his own. And it looks like he will be able to do that. So his first action is going to be a fight. He only has one attack, however, and he will hit on fours. One attack unarmed on a four, and that is going to miss. Reaction attacks will come back across from Zachariah. He hits on a four. He wounds on a three. Both successful. Mesh armor, five up save is needed. No AP on the weapon, and the save is made. On the other side of the board, Priest Gabriel is going to make his 2d6 test, and while it doesn't really matter here as he is in close combat, if he wanted to flee or something like that, I guess it would matter. Two base attacks will come across, plus one for his sidearm, three in total, and he is going to hit on threes. The stub gun will be the only hit that is successful. Strength three, toughness three, fours are needed to wound. That will be a successful wound. He does have mesh armor, so this will be a 5-up save. That save will be failed, and it looks like 9 will take his first wound. We will then see reaction attacks come back across unarmed. One attack on a 4, and then wounding on a 4. That is unsuccessful. We then have Flea that is going to activate, and he is going to charge into Ezekiel. Again, not a position that you want to be in against an Eviscerator, and he's going to launch two unarmed attacks. Both are going to hit, requiring fours. Fours also needed to wound. Both are going to wound. 
Ezekiel will take five up saves, and one of them will pass, one will fail, and he is going to take a wound. He has one wound remaining. He will launch back with his reaction attacks. The Eviscerator gets two base attacks with Shred and Sever, and he hits on fours. One of those is going to be successful. Strength 4 against Toughness 3 just requires 3s, and that 5 will cause a wound, and this is going to cut right through his flak armor, and Injury Die will be rolled out, and it will be a flesh wound on Flea. Back to the Brethren of Judgment, Isaiah is going to activate, and it looks like that is going to Bloodlust, and he is going to charge into the closest enemy fighter, and that is going to be 9. He is going to get 2 attacks here, unarmed. And he will hit on threes due to the assist from Gabriel. And that will be one hit. And he is going to wound on a four. There will be no wound. Reaction attacks will come back across from nine unarmed. Hitting on fours, but it will miss. The cultists activate Chum, who is going to attempt to take a shot with a long rifle down at Ezekiel. He normally hits on a four. The infrasight offsets partial cover, but can he act on his own? He can, so he is going to roll to where he can act. He is going to aim first and attempt to fire. Next up, he'll have to pass a willpower check on a 7 per the scenario rules, and that is unsuccessful. He will not be able to take this shot. The firebrand activates next, and he will bloodlust a second time. Climbs down the ladder and launches into combat with the bone picker, Simon. Two attacks base and one for the charge, making these unarmed attacks, and two of those are going to hit on fours. Fours required to wound, one wound, and Simon does not wear armor, so this is going to cut right through, and an injury die will be rolled out here for Simon, brand new to the crew, and he goes out of action. A D66 rolled up for him, red first, it is a 25, which is out cold. Nerve checks will be needed, first by the Firebrand, he's good on a 6, and then from the Bone Picker, he needs an 8. He is going to fail, and it looks like he is going to become broken. As the game continues to get more wacky, we are going to activate Raisin over for the Cultist. He rolls up an 8, that is going to make him bloodlust, and he will use both actions to move forward as he is not within charge range. He will stop one inch away from Isaiah. House Cardor activates Tobiah, and he is going to roll up. He is in control of his own actions, but he will elect to charge into Ocelot, hoping to add some assists and keep him pinned down. Two attacks come out, and both of them are going to hit on two sixes. Force required to wound. That'll be one wound, and he does wear mesh armor. So a five up save, no AP. That is going to be successful. Reaction attacks will come back across. One attack, hitting on a four, is unsuccessful. The Disciple 9 activates and takes his 2d6 tests. Again, doesn't matter a whole lot here as he's already in combat. He's going to roll up a 10, decides to attack Isaiah, and he is going to get one attack unarmed, hitting on fours. That is successful. He will wound on fours, and that is unsuccessful. Isaiah will strike back with an unarmed attack of his own. He is going to hit, looking for a four. He will also wound, now looking for a four, and that's unsuccessful as well. On the other side of the board, Zachariah will attempt to attack Ocelot with his polearm, Rolling up his 2d6 test doesn't really matter here. He will launch one attack into Ocelot with his polearm, and he is going to hit on threes due to the assist. That shot is going to miss. Reaction attacks will come back across, hitting on fours and wounding on fours. That is unsuccessful. Up top, Dog is going to activate and use both of his actions to move closer to the enemy. Next up, Lazarus is going to activate for House Cawdor. He rolls up a 6, which is good, and he is going to use that to charge into Ocelot here. Rolling up to see what he gets, he goes the full distance. This gets him around and into the side of, of Ocelot, and he is going to launch two total attacks unarmed. 
He will hit on twos due to the assists from his brothers. Both of those are going to hit. Four is required to wound. Both are going to wound. So two saves, mesh armor, five ups are needed. Both of those fail, and there will be two injury dice rolled out here as he already has one wound on him. He goes down to zero wounds, and that is going to be a serious injury, and Ocelot will get the coup de grace from Lazarus. We'll roll up a d66 for Ocelot, the red die being the first, and that is going to be a 24, which will be out cold. Now moving to the center of the board, we have Bosk, and he activates, and he is going to Bloodlust, so he opens the door and uses his second action to move towards the closest enemy fighter. The cultists still have activations to make, and Jack, who is seriously injured, is going to Bloodlust and crawl towards the closest enemy fighter. We are then going to roll up 2d6 for the leader, Angmar. And he is going to fail as well, and he will bloodlust. He's out of charge range as he has to move around this junk pile. And he is going to make both of his actions as a move towards Ezekiel and stop one inch away. So that brings us to the end of turn three as the battle lines are closing. Close combat starting to take place across the board. And again, both gangs very ill-equipped to do much damage. Neither gang is eligible to break right now, so we will go to recovery rolls, rally test, and generate faith. We do roll a rally test, kind of out of order here. He is going to successfully rally and come back to the fight, gaining an XP. Now we will take the test here for Jack. He is going to roll back over with a flesh wound. Faith dice are being generated on a 5-up. And that is going to be two that are successful. We continue to move forward with turn four. Priority rolls coming out now, and the tie means that it's going over to the cultists. And Angmar, who did stop an inch before Ezekiel last time, is going to charge in. Doesn't really matter if he passes or fails his 2d6 test here, as the result is going to be the same. We do take it anyway. He is going to get two base attacks, plus one for the charge and plus one for two melee weapons, four in total. He has a chain sword and reclaimed auto pistol hitting on twos due to the assist. It looks like two from the chain sword will go through. Fours are needed to wound and that six will kick off rending which will add one additional damage. AP minus one takes his mesh armor to a six up save and the save will be successful. Reaction attacks will come back across from Ezekiel. He will get two attacks of his own, and one of those will be successful. Strength plus one makes this threes to wound. There will be no wound. Over four house Cawdor, Gabriel is going to attempt an act of faith, and the words fall upon them and they become broken. He is going to take three faith dice and looking to get a cumulative five or better and he will successfully do that. Each fighter within 9 inches and line of sight to him will need to take nerve checks. Cool checks needed by the cultist, first by Dog, needing a 7. He is going to fail and become broken. We've then got Raisin, who also needs a 7. He is going to become broken and make a run. And then we've got 9, who needs a 6 to remain cool. And that is going to be passed. Both Dog and Raisin, Dog rolls up a 12 and makes a run for cover. Raisin rolls up a 10 and runs back towards the stairs. I guess before all of this, Gabriel needs to roll a 2d6 roll, and that thankfully is successful. He is in control of his actions, and it looks like he is going to fight 9 here. He is going to get 3 total attacks, 2 base plus one for a melee sidearm combo. Hitting on twos, all of those will be successful. Getting that assist from Isaiah. The stub gun successfully wounds on a four, and the chain axe wounds on threes, getting that plus one to strength. All of those are gonna land wounds. First off, we will take the mesh armor, AP minus one, six is needed. Both of those are going to fail. A five needed on the stub gun. That is going to be successful. 
That will still be two damage. That will go through, and that is going to force injury rolls here. Two of them, as he already has one wound on him. He goes down with a flesh wound, and he gets the coup de grace for the second action from Priest Gabriel. A d66 is rolled up for nine. It is a 43, which is grievous. He will miss next week's action. Chum then activates. He will be able to act on his own accord. He will move to the side and attempt to fire the long rifle. It does have an infrasight, so it will negate partial cover. He will need to pass a willpower check, which is a seven. And rolling up that willpower check, see if he can take the shot. He will be able to take the shot. He normally hits on a four, but the scenario says there's a minus two modifier for all ranged attacks, so he will be hitting on sixes. Again, the infrasight offsetting the partial cover. So he takes the shot, and he is just going to miss. Back to House Cawdor, Isaiah is going to Bloodlust, and he will use both of his actions to move towards the closest enemy fighter. Bosk will then activate for the Cultist, and he is going to Bloodlust as well. Rolling up a 13, he will charge the closest enemy fighter and that is going to be right into the back of Lazarus. It's a charge that he cannot fail. He will launch two unarmed attack into the back of Lazarus, hitting on a four. One of those will be successful, and he will need fours to wound. Strength three, toughness three, that is also good. Lazarus does have mesh armor, so a five-up save is taken and that is failed, so an injury die is rolled out for him, and he takes a flesh wound. We do forget to make reaction attacks with Lazarus, as Tobiah is quick to launch into combat himself. He does pass his test, but electing to charge anyway. He is going to get two unarmed attacks, and he will hit on force due to the assist. The auto pistol misses, the ammo check is good, but there will still be one hit that goes through unarmed, and strength three, toughness three, fours needed to wound, there will not be a wound. Reaction attack from Bosk as he turns to face, normally he on a four, he's getting interfered with, so a five, and then he turned, so six is required, only one, that is going to be unsuccessful. Back in the center of the board, Flea activates and attempts to hit Ezekiel on a three, that is successful, getting the assist from Angmar. He fails to wound, however. Ezekiel strikes back, needing fives from his eviscerator due to the interference. He gets one hit. Strength plus one on the eviscerator will make this a three to wound. That is going to do a wound, and AP1 is going to cut right through his flak armor. So an injury die will be rolled out for Flea, and he goes down with a serious injury. This was during reaction attacks, so a coup de grace is not eligible, but Ezekiel is now going to activate on his own. He is still tied up with Angmar. Double sixes was the 2d6 test. He launches two attacks with the Eviscerator into Angmar, and he is no longer getting interference, so needing fours. One of those is going to be successful. Strength plus one means threes in order to wound. That is going to do a wound. AP minus one puts Angmar to a six up save with his mesh armor, and it is successful. And Angmar will launch attacks back with his chain sword and reclaimed auto pistol. This will be three attacks in total, and the chain sword is in red, no longer getting an assist, but he's hitting on threes. All of those are going to be successful. The stub gun will need force in order to wound, as will the chain sword, and it is just his base strength. And one from the chain sword goes through at AP1. It is also rending. The save is going to be failed, so Ezekiel is going to take two damage, and that means an injury die will be coming out for him. Two to be exact, and that results in two flesh wounds. Jack then activates for the cultist. He will bloodlust. He's going to get to his feet and then use his other action to move towards Ezekiel. The Brethren, Zachariah, is going to activate. He is going to Bloodlust as well. He rolls up a 10, plus 3 is 13. That will make him eligible to charge into Bosk. And he is going to get assists. Two attacks from the Polearm on twos due to the assist, and both are good. 
and then strength plus one threes required to wound both are wounds flak armor is a six up save while one is saved an injury die will come out for bosk here and he is going down with a serious injury he will get the coup de gras from zachariah Rolling up a d66 for Bosk, and the red die first, a 51. The House of Faith have the remaining moves, and Jedediah will activate. He will successfully control his own actions. He is going to climb the ladder, getting back into cover, hoping to get a shot off with that crossbow. We then have Lazarus, who is going to control both of his actions as well, but use both of them to move forward, getting into cover. And that brings us to the end of turn four, and the cultists are in a bit of a predicament here. The leader of the cult group is extremely important, and if they flee the battlefield, he is in combat. That requires an initiative check, and if he fails, he will go down seriously injured. First things first, let's get to that bottle check here in the end phase. The cult is taking their bottle check. They are good. So we are going to take a recovery roll for Flea, who is getting an assist from the fighters beside him and he is going to stay down seriously injured we'll then take rally test first for raisin who needs a seven he is going to stay broken and then for dog who also needs a seven he will recover we're going to risk it a bit in this one as we move to turn five and first off generating some faith dice and it looks like they will get one out of this lot and starting off with Ezekiel in the middle of the board, he is going to perform an act of faith to attempt to break these fighters within 9 inches, tossing 3 faith dice at this, needing a 5, and he is just barely going to get that. All fighters within 9 inches and line of sight will need to take nerve checks. First off for Angmar, he's got a cool of 5, and he is going to be good. We will then test for Flea, who is down and seriously injured. And he is normally cool on a 7, does have some fighters around him though that are giving him some bonuses. He's going to be good on a 6, and then Jack as well, getting a bonus from Angmar is good as well. Ezekiel is then going to fight, and he gets 2 attacks. He will hit on 4s, no longer getting interference. There will be no wound, however, and Angmar is going to fight back 3 attacks of his own, 2 from the chainsword, and 1 from his auto pistol. The auto pistol misses, as does one of the chainsword shots. One of them will still go through, however. Strength 3, toughness 1. So it will be 2's to wound here. That is going to do a wound. And AP1 takes the save to 6 up, which is failed. And that is going to be an injury die out for Ezekiel. And even if it's a flesh wound, which it is, that is 3 in total. And he will be removed from the board. Now the injury is a 32, which is grievous. He does have restless faith, so he will be able to participate in the next battle, even though he's in recovery. The cultists then activate Angmar, and he can move on his own free will. He is going to use both of his actions to move, trying to get out of line of sight of that firebrand while closing the gap on the bone picker. Isaiah activates next, and he can act on his own as well. He's going to take a shot here. He has the Exterminator. It is a one-shot weapon. He passes a willpower check to take the shot, and this is a template single-shot blaze weapon. It hits at strength 3, and it's AP 1. Now, while this does not cause a wound, House Caldor did play Purity Through Fire, so he will be set ablaze on a 2-up instead of a 4-up, and that is going to be successful. We will take an initiative check as he does become pinned and he does fail and he plummets to the bottom of the stairs. Raisin will then suffer a strength three hit and that is going to wound him on fours and then he has flak armor. Six up save will be failed so an injury die will roll out for him. He is going to be seriously injured and on fire. With his second action, Isaiah is going to move down, attempting to potentially take him out on the next turn. And now the activation goes back to Affliction, and we have Jek. He is going to be able to move on his own free will. Staying close enough to give an assist here to Flea, who is down seriously injured, he's going to fire a grenade launcher down at Micah. 
He has him in the open, normally hits on fours. He does have to pass a willpower check first, which he will do on a seven. So he can take the shot, it is minus two. So instead of hitting on his four, it will be a six. That shot is going to miss. So we will roll up a D6 and a scatter. Angmar is down in that direction as well. It is going to scatter backwards, however, and not hit anyone. The Firebrand Jedediah is going to activate, hoping to get him with his crossbow now. First off, taking that 2d6 test to see if he can act on his own. And going to be shooting that uh, arrow down at the terrain here, so there will just be a minus 2 hit modifier if it is successful. He does fail that 2d6 test, however. He does Bloodlust, and he takes both of his moves, getting closer to the enemy. Back on the other side of the board for Affliction, Chum is going to activate and first take his 2d6 test to see if he can act on his own. He can, and he is going to take a shot here, and he needs to pass a willpower check on a 7-up to take the shot. He is not going to aim, and that does not happen, so he is going to try it again as the action does not take place. Once again, looking for a 7, again, failing that willpower check, he stays put. Lazarus is then going to activate, and he is going to bloodlust using both of his actions to move closer to the closest enemy fighter. Next we have Dog that is going to activate. He can control his own actions and he is going to move and attempt to fire that reclaimed auto gun down at Azea. And he normally hits on a 4. Short range takes it to a 3. There is a minus 2 modifier per this scenario however. First passing that willpower check on a 7 plus in order to even take the shot. And now he will be hitting on 5s with the modifiers included. This is a rapid fire weapon, and it is going to hit. It's going to hit twice. Strength three, toughness three, two wound rolls needing fours. One of them will wound, and he does have flak armor, which is a six up save, and he makes it. Priest Gabriel then rolls up a seven, plus three is ten. He will use both of his actions to surge forward. And then we have Raisin down here, the fighter that is on fire. We are going to first roll up for him on that blaze as he is going to take a strength three, AP minus one hit. That is going to wound. And at AP one, it's gonna cut through his flak armor and an injury die will come out for him. And he is going out with a serious injury. Micah will activate next. He rolls up a seven and that will bloodlust him right into Angmar. Now, fortunately for Micah, he's got two unarmed attacks going up against a chain sword and reclaimed auto pistol. So two attacks hitting on fours. Both of those are going to hit. Toughness three, strength three, fours needed to wound. Both of those are going to wound. And we realize that his sword has parry, so we re-roll one of these hits to make sure that these are both successful. They are. Mesh armor is a five-up save, and while one is saved, Angmar will take a wound. Angmar then makes reaction attacks, and he has two base plus one for two melee weapons, hitting on threes. That's going to be all of them successful. The reclaimed auto pistol hits twice rapid fire, so all of these are going to be good. Just needs twos to wound as his re reduced toughness is only one. Only the auto pistol lands one shot. It is going to cause an injury die roll, however, and he does go down seriously injured. No coup de grace here, as that does not happen when you're making reaction attacks. Over on the other side of the board, we do have a few of the brethren that are going to move forward. House Caldor does control the rest of the activations, and that brings us to the end of turn 5. And we have a few things to wrap up here. First off, we will take a bottle check for the Helic Cultist as on a 6-up, they could potentially bottle out. And that is exactly what they roll. So the cultists have bottled in this game. We are going to do some recovery rolls as well as rally test to potentially gain experience. First off, rolling for recovery, he is getting an assist here. He will roll back over with a flush wound. And then we do have another recovery roll to make over here. He will roll back with a flesh wound as well. The same will happen for the bone picker. He receives his third flesh wound, goes out of action on a 42, which is grievous. And the chaos cultists have elected to flee the battlefield.
As the cultists run into the darkness, Angmar promises that they will be back next time better prepared. And with that, we will move directly into the post game as this has been a long battle report. It took a long time to make, took a long time to edit. I do hope you enjoyed it. It was very wonky. The cultists came out with double stubbers and infiltrate, hoping to get somewhere on the board to take early shots, but the minus two penalty and having to pass willpower checks really made them ineffective. All shooting in this game was just completely ineffective. In addition, you never knew if you were going to get to act or if bloodlust was going to take over your fighters and they charge into the closest enemy or into a potential friend. House Cardor will improve to 2-0 on the season while the KS Cultists fall to 0-1 on their debut. Kane was escorted to the dock, but upon looking at a 90 credit bill, they have elected to just let him die. The man of the match will go over to the priest, Gabriel, as he was able to successful rally from being broken and then take out Nine, one of the disciples for the cultists. Certainly thank you for watching. If you have made it this far, big thank you to the to Coffee Supporters Club. Your names are on the screen now, as well as on a piece of our terrain. I'm fully caught up on this, so I've got all the names out there. Really appreciate your support. If you'd like any information on that, a link will be down in the description below. Really hope you enjoy this battle report and look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.